Hey guys, it's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. So I had done a video the other day, backwards by mistake, if you noticed, talking about how I rewatched season three of Twin Peaks and I enjoyed it more. Uh, I still didn't like some of the stuff and, you know, I missed the small town feel, but I did enjoy it way more than I did the first time around. I think because I paid a little more attention, I grasped more and um, I was able to stop the Blu-ray and kind of like look up things and whatever. Where when I first watched it on Showtime a couple years ago, it goes and if you miss something, you miss something. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, that being said, I was wondering, you know, just like the Diary of Laura Palmer came out, which was an excellent book, by the way, what else came out book-wise after this third season? Uh, I came across, I think it's The Secret Files, which I heard was pretty much like a very limited amount of information, more like uh, notes and pictures from different characters. So I skipped out on that one. I did, however, read the uh, final dossier, which is a, it's written like, um, like a dossier, like a, like some kind of notes sent to Gordon Cole by, uh, is it Tamara Peterson, uh, TP they call her, <coughs> excuse me, from uh, Twin Peaks season three. She's like the young FBI agent in season three who they, uh, Albert and Cole take under their wing into the Blue Rose organization. So <clears throat> She's looking into all the stuff at Twin Peaks, and she's there, and she's sending notes back to Gordon Cole, and the book is laid out like notes. Um, I just wanted to briefly talk about it. Uh, it may be a little spoilery, but not really that much. <clears throat> what I liked about the book is they talk a little bit more about Judy, or Jow Day, who is the evil entity from Twin Peaks. Um, they talk a little bit more about the double Cooper, you know, the... Cooper that is possessed by Bob. They talk more about uh, Sarah Palmer, which I thought was very interesting and definitely sheds more light on the Judy Sarah Palmer connection to an extent. <clears throat> um, it also sheds light on what happened a little bit in regards to Laura Palmer at the end of season three when Kyle McLaughlin goes to save her and she doesn't get killed. It just it's a brief thing, but it, it's at least slightly, um, you know, <clears throat> what's the word I'm looking for? It at least feels good slightly to get some sort of resolve. <clears throat> um, what I didn't love about it is it didn't have a ton of real meat. But what it had there was little sprinkles of it, I guess. It was about 100 and I think 60 pages. So I was able to read it pretty quickly. It's a very fast read, which was good. <clears throat> uh, it looks like a nice book. It's hardbound, done very well, just like the previous book. Um, what I didn't like about it otherwise was there was some stuff about like minuscule characters from the first and second season that I felt didn't really add much to the mix. Uh, you do find some interesting stuff out about Norma. And uh, Annie, but Annie's sort of res like resolution isn't that great. It's not something that came out that was like, oh, wow, this, it was just sort of like, oh, this happens and it's bad. And that's it. <clears throat> Interesting. More backstory. Um, I guess Mark Frost, who wrote this, the co-creator of Twin Peaks, who David Lynch sometimes, I think, uh, either gets annoyed with for letting out too much or maybe going off in a different direction than David Lynch had envisioned, um, couldn't help himself that he had to put politics into the story. He, he took the character, I can't think of her name right now, <clears throat> who married in Twin Peaks, uh, the mayor and her, his brother, and they were both old men and they died, and she was like a gold digger and took their money. She, at one point in the book, dates who he alludes to be someone who owns a tower in Manhattan and uh, sort of references him being like a bad person or something. Not that negative, but to that extent. And it's just like people cannot help themselves, but just, you know, throwing up their little like, you know, we're all together and we hate the president or whatever. It's just, it's draining to just have every bit of information and everything have just this political nuance to it. Very, very annoying. Um, <clears throat> overall, I would say if you are clamoring for more Twin Peaks and just want a little more on Judy and Sarah Palmer primarily, 
it's a pretty good read. It's not something I would necessarily go back to and read again, but I'm glad I got little bits of information. But then, is it canon because David Lynch sort of rolls his eyes at some of the stuff Frost does? I guess it is. Um, but yeah, I think Judy and Sarah Palmer, you get the mo most information about a little bit about Norma and Annie and Norma's mother. Um, you know, James Hurley and the accident he got into and how come he's a little weird now in the third season. So it's pretty interesting for fans and fans only. Um, I would say if you find it at like a thrift shop for a couple bucks or some kind of secondhand bookstore, it's probably worth it. Uh, but I wouldn't go out of my way to go crazy to find it either. I didn't want to spoil too much, but I did want to kind of give people a little input. You can also find what's in the book online. So if you go on to like the Twin Peaks wiki or whatever it's called, it does give you the quotes from the book about what happens with the characters. So you really don't have to buy the book anyway. Thanks, guys, for watching. It's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. Be good.